Hi, I'm Luke Serveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, we're going to spend some time with Neil Tanner. He's president of Neil Tanner Inc. and he's a teleprompter operator. And he's got some interesting stuff to tell us about how things have changed in the time of COVID. So how you doing, Neil? I'm doing good, Luke. Thanks for having me on, man. How are you doing? Life is pretty good, actually. Good to hear. Yeah, it's it's crazy times what uh, what we're in. But uh, one of the things I love about the film industry and the video industry and the events industry is that we are creative people. Our clients are always throwing us tasks and we have to be creative. And so here's a great example of us coming up with solutions for the industry uh, that we have to be creative with. Absolutely. So tell us what we're looking at right now. Why are we looking at this uh, mobile phone in front of the... <laughs> Yeah, so this setup is a little bit odd. Uh, this isn't something that I would use in, in prime time, but this is something that we came up for this interview. The way it works is, is that Luke and I are having this conversation via a, uh, uh, you know, a phone like right here, but I'm also recording this on a, uh, an Android phone so that I get better audio and also better video than my laptop. And so we're, we're going to talk through some of the uh, experiences that we're doing right now as far as teleprompting uh, for clients. And you can see this right now is one of those moments where, uh, for example, if you're doing this, you want to make sure that your phone has all its notifications off. I actually paid my cousin to uh, call me on right now. Thank you, Katie. You're the best. Anyway, so... By doing this, we can still have a, uh, a pretty professional solution. Obviously, in the real world, we'd have those notifications turned off. There's a couple of different ways that we're doing teleprompting these days. And we, I mean, I really felt like I had to come up with these solutions because we've had so many clients say, you know what? Oh, man, we had that full five-day uh, job that we can't do because the client says, you know, we can't do a live event. And so what I've been doing is telling my clients that we can still do stuff remotely. And by doing that, we can, you know, still teleprompt for them. They can still do camera remotely. They can still do interviews remotely. They just edit it together and then send it out later. And by doing this whole remote thing, we're able to save the show. First of all, we're able to save our jobs and we're also able to save the jobs of everybody else on the crew, mostly everybody else, maybe not catering, but, um, but I mean, that's that's the whole genius of being able to do stuff remotely now. Yeah. So let, let's go through it a little bit. What's an example of how you would work remotely? So obviously, in the time of COVID, it's um, some people are a little bit scared about the idea of having um, personal contact. You know, if in the real world, I'd, I'd be wearing a mask, um, we'd be six feet apart and all that sort of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about what it's like to be on set right now. So for example, if I was to go to a normal set, the days of just showing up and working on everybody's gear is, is gonna be very different. So for us, safe COVID teleprompting looks like this. We would show up with our gear, we'd have the gear already wiped down with 70% alcohol. We would have all our own cables. We'd have our own power supplies. We would have our own signal cables and stuff like that. And so sort of the scenario is, is that the camera person would do the camera work. The lighting person would only touch their lighting. So the camera person would set up and then six feet, 10 feet away would be, you know, the gaffer working with everything that they need to work on. And then when the camera person is done, they would step away. I would come in with something like this, which is a, a freestanding teleprompter. And this thing just, uh, you know, it it's regular old teleprompter. There would be text right here. You'd see it reflected here. And this thing, the nice thing about it is, is that I'm able to um, just nose it so that the camera would feed its lens right through here and shoot. So by keeping it freestanding, I don't have to worry about interfacing with the camera person's camera. So I'm not, I'm not touching it. Everything's separate. So that's sort of the world of, of COVID on set stuff. We would also be running really long cables to the other part of the room. We would have the client come in. We'd have them, you know, everybody would be wearing masks, of course. They would come in, uh, take their mask off so that like, you know, the creases that you'd see on their face, those would go away, give that time to sort of flush out. And then we'd do a show like normal. They'd probably do their own makeup and 
however that you know correct protocol would go but at least for teleprompting and, and camera and lighting it's going to be a slightly different world on set it's keeping separate keeping it safe and then when we're done we pack up in the same sort of thing we take our gear aside we prep it separate from everybody else and there's no this is the tough part for me because i always love going in and like i'll get that same bag i'll get that c-stand you know and helping the rest of the crew out I can't do that. That part's tough now. I just gotta like, I'm done. I got my department. See ya. So it's, uh, that part's weird. It's a very social business. So it's odd for us to sort of have to back off from that. And have you done this already? Been there in person on a shoot? Yeah, I've done this a couple times now. We've done it for a major California university. We're, uh, we're actually gonna do it another one for uh, another big private university. Uh, in a couple days where we're following these practices. And we've had, the big thing is, is we've had these conversations before we go to set. So everybody has the same sort of protocol. You know, when we do this, we expect this, we're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. And everybody signs off on it. It's not like a contract, but it's, it's just sort of a general understanding before we get to set how we're gonna operate. Totally. If you're not gonna be present, how does that scenario look? Good question. There have been uh, a couple scenarios where we can't actually all get together. You know, it's it's just like for whatever reason, for uh, mostly for safety. But to be honest, this sort of thing is going to work for remote shoots as well. So taking away from the strictly the COVID sort of thing, some of these things that I'm talking about could actually be used for remote setups. We've we've all seen remote setups before, where the you know the producer sort of phones it in with Skype, and they're just listening in. They're like, okay, more of this, less headroom, that sort of stuff. Where there's going to be that, but on a whole different level. So yes, this is all for COVID and, and shelter in place. But think about this: you can now uh, use this technology to be able to, like, for example, I've been requested to do a job in Ohio. There's no way I would have normally been able to do this sort of stuff, but thanks to having to be creative about remote teleprompting and remote production in general, I get to do this job. Let me go over a couple different scenarios. First is we did one where um, this is right at the beginning of uh, shelter in place and we were lucky to be able to still do this. Uh, this would take a little bit more work um, in the current state of shelter in place, but what they had done is, is they built an entire set inside of a ballroom. This was supposed to be a live event with live attendees, uh, questions and, and everything going. It was a two day event. And what they ended up doing was scratching the audience. They in, you know, put a, a giant teleprompter at the back of the room and uh, we fed our text through that thing. We were still present. So this was still uh, sort of a hybrid not a live event. We were still doing it remotely. I was still separated. The camera people were still separated. We were all infancy practicing social distancing. Um, so that's sort of a hybrid is, is doing a live event, but you know, with a set, with an actual live to tape sort of mentality. And that's something that I want to address is, is that as we go through and we're taping these things, there's a very different feel of, and I'm, you know, anybody who's been recording knows that there's a different feel of like, oh, I can just do it again. I screwed up. No big deal. Run it back. But there's such a different vibe when you're doing it live to tape or really live, because then you, I mean, you, as a presenter, you just have to give it your all. You just, there, there is no going back. You have to give that sense and the delivery. You can hear it in my voice. The delivery is so different uh, doing a live event um, then if you're just recording and you're like, Oh, Hey, look, can you fix that? I'm so sorry. You know? So, um, that's, that's sort of a, a different shift. So that's one sort of a hybrid version. The other one, we just did this recently, um, keynote speaker for a, a major university, Ohio state university, OSU, their keynote speaker in May wasn't able to leave where they were. I wasn't able to come down and prompt uh, physically with them because of the whole shelter in place. This is like a, you know, multi-billion dollar company. They can't mess up any kind of shelter in place uh, situation. So we had to do this remotely. And what we came up with was uh, sort of like the, the strongest version, but even this, we've come up with better solutions. So what we ended up doing was taking this same idea, you know, a freestanding teleprompter. And what we did was we 
wiped it down, made a ton of instructions and photos and and printed it all out with you know the red arrows and you're trying to describe this to a six-year-old kid how to set up teleprompter gear and it would be the same as if you're trying to tell somebody how to you know run like an airy you know it's just like okay well this is color temperature kids it's it's really just trying to think to the you know the most basic level how to set up a c stand you know so set all those instructions created everything shipped it down uh, by courier, by the way. We didn't use you know, FedEx or UPS just because it, it really needed to be tracked. It was like an individual person drove this down. Then what we had to do was they, they picked it up, they set it up following the instructions. And what we did was we made sure that we had a practice day. So we had a tech day, those instructions for someone who's not an AV person. So they set it up. We had um, about five or six people on a uh, Zoom or a WebEx or a Skype or a meeting. Any of those you know, ways of doing a conference video call had a bunch of people signing in. There was someone who was talking about, okay, well, what's, what's the lighting gonna be like behind me? Uh, is there any way to keep those blinds down? Is, is this light gonna be like, we're shooting this you know, tomorrow at the same time? All the things you normally think of in lighting, you know, hey, that shirt, it's checkered, it's gonna more, you know, just all the things that you would normally do, you say that during the prep day without the talent there. It's just the tech and you and, and six other people that have an opinion. Also, obviously we're testing audio. You know, one of the things that we, you know, we recommend is that there is, you know, get an actual professional microphone. Don't use the uh, camera's microphone for a lot of good reasons. Obviously in a pinch, if that's what you have, that's what you do. You know, Sure makes these really cool microphones. I'm using a, uh, a lav mic by Audio-Technica. In this scenario, what we did was, is they set up this freestanding teleprompter and then they insisted on using their phone. And so we had to do it in such a way that the phone would be able to live back here of the hood. And so there's all kinds of clamps that you can get that, you know, spring load and, you know, just be able to hold on to your camera and those sort of things. We would take like an articulated arm. We would put this back through there so it would fit inside the hood, not get any light leaks because that's really key. If you're, if you're back here, you want to make sure that whatever you have, you know, whether it's a camera, a professional camera lens is sealed by this hood. Because if you get light leak inside here with teleprompters, and you know, you've probably seen this on set, if you have light bouncing in here, it'll bounce into the glass and then back into your lens. So make sure this is always light tight. You can always get fabric. If you're dealing with phones, take fabric, put it over everything, and then it just sort of like covers over. So that's one solution. Alternately, they could have done it with a professional crew, but in this case, it had to be this particular company's phone. And um, they recorded on that phone, they shot it in 4K, they were able to take it elsewhere, post it, knew a nice little gentle zoom, and just all the things to make it professional. They color corrected it, obviously. You can see with mine, I'm not, I'm not exactly pro grade, but uh, it's it's going to work for the conversation. That's that sort of situation where we've got a an actual professional teleprompter with either a phone or a professional camera that's also been shipped down. So that's one scenario. A uh, question I have: If they're using the phone as the camera, yeah, uh, what's feeding the teleprompter? Is that just a, a laptop that they have, and then your yeah, totally a good question. And I glossed over that. What would happen is, is that client has their own laptop. And so they would basically go out from the laptop. They would have a Zoom call. But I'm just going to say Zoom just as, as a generic thing. I was sending teleprompter signal from my laptop at home to this laptop here. We did a Zoom call. Um, and then this spat out through its second you know, outlet to... Um, you know, through HDMI or, you know, whatever laptops are able to feed out into the teleprompter behind me. And so when this was up and running, you would actually see the text up there. And we would toggle back and forth between the, you know, the five person crew. And this is, of course, we're doing this the next day when the CEO is there. And again, best practice is definitely set up like an hour before 
just like on a regular shoot, set up like an hour before, make sure everything works. And then when the when the CEO sits down, they're just looking right at exactly what they should be, which is their script. We've already edited it just like on a regular shoot and run through it and formatted it and uh, everybody signed off. So yeah, great question. We feed remotely from our laptop into their laptop, which then feeds the uh, professional teleprompter. Right. It's like a share screen sort of situation. Yeah, exactly. And that's when you're doing these things, you start learning all the different things that work best for Zoom. You have to do this on WebEx. You have to do this on Meeting and Skype. You have to do this. But you know, generally, you get rid of the multiple people that are in the conversation. You go to share uh, or present whatever the technology name is. And then you just do it full screen. You get rid of the bars on top and the bottom, um, just all these different things. You turn off notifications. You make sure that everybody else's phone is on mute. You make sure that uh, it's just, you know, just one bit of audio is going out. There's no feedback, which has wrecked some of the shoots that we've been on. We found it later. Uh, it's okay. But since a lot of the stuff is over Wi Fi, if you can, best practices uh, do it over Ethernet. So, you know, get yourself an actual dedicated Ethernet cable, or if you need to, you can always, you know, upgrade your Wi-Fi so that your upload speed is going out higher. Talk to your provider and also making sure that everybody else in your household is not watching movies or playing games and stuff like that. That when you're doing this, you just have like the dedicated, you know, full pipe of, uh, of Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So I've, I've had to do this remotely, like away from my house and it's still worked out. We've also found that some conference companies platforms are actually better at smooth, uh, teleprompting signal and video than others. Zoom actually has a really great algorithm, but you actually have to select one little tick that says, I think it's like video smoothness or something like that. But Zoom has a dedicated thing that uh, makes their video look better than the others that we've seen currently. And I, you know, that we're saying this on whatever, whatever it is, like the second of June, things can change. Other companies may have gotten better. We have this sort of traditional, you set up the teleprompter. We also have, you send the traditional teleprompter, but the client sets it up and you talk them through it. And then what about using a laptop and, and a phone, but not using the phone right. through the teleprompter? Yeah, so that's what I was talking about when we we're saying we can do a lot of this stuff remotely now without any really special gear. Um, obviously, as someone who enjoys renting equipment to clients, I prefer if we can do the full bells and whistles, but I recognize you know, it just, it is what it is. We need to make the shot work for everybody. For the situation where you've just got a phone and you've just got a laptop, uh, there's a couple of really cool solutions. If you just have a laptop, they actually have come out with very small, very cute teleprompters. In fact, there's a company called Little Teleprompting, Little Prompters, and they have a scenario where you can mount this thing on you know the cutest smallest little tripod you've got you can put a professional camera a smaller one of course back here i have this right now set up to show you that you can do a phone through back here so this is one version but you can get rid of this and put a full-size camera it's got a hole and everything like you need like that but what's cool about this bear with me for the technology stuff they have come up with a solution where you can Take your laptop and here's your, you know, here's your webcam right here, just like everybody else's. And then this little thing has clamps on the side and you just take this, drop it over. And now you've got the world's cutest little um, teleprompter set up. So you can have, you know, some feed down here on the laptop like normal, but then you can take a phone and you can place it right here. And then what you would do is zoom in, which is what we prefer, it's more professional. There's also some adequate uh, voice activated teleprompters that are out there. Those also work if you don't wanna involve an entire crew, if it's a really small budget thing, Prompt Smart makes a really good one. It's nothing that I would put in front of a live event, but alternately what we suggest is doing stuff through Zoom calls. So we just zoom into this phone, it's reflected up into here, 
And now you're able to look into this record through the webcam and get, you know, professionally scrolled text that you can edit and remotely. Um, and that's, again, that's one of the beauties of having a whole team doing the teleprompting. The other thing you can do with little prompter is is that you can also if you want to go pro you can get like these little five inch monitor marshall makes them lilliput makes them you can replace your phone with this feed and you can still have like professional much brighter monitors than say your standard phones they're just not as bright these things are like three times four times the brightness and uh, it really helps with readability so here's another example, another alternate to sending down a full-size teleprompter like this, because this is a huge case. It's, it's expensive to ship. One of them is this company called Promptbox. I don't have their latest version. Their latest version actually folds up, so it's even smaller. But this one is a rigid uh, metal case. It's got a decent size opening for professional cameras. I think it's like 104 millimeters or so. This top part tilts up and that's where you've got the phone. So it would sit up there and it would just have the text that you would send uh, again via Zoom or WebEx. It would then reflect into this glass here. And so the talent would be able to see it. Now in all these scenarios, you're using a lot of phones. What about iPads? Is that like just a non-starter for you or? Tablets, uh, iPads, um, those sort of things are, are totally fine. Uh, what we end up seeing people do is, is that you still wanna have a separate feed. For best case scenario, because you've got an entire crew that's listening in and watching in, you wanna be able to see what the feed is. If we just did it, you know, where we strictly fed a teleprompter signal full screen, then the audience wouldn't be able to see the reactions. It's like, oh my gosh, that guy's like picking his nose on camera. Why didn't we catch that? Oh, because we can only see the teleprompter screen. So because we have two feeds going on simultaneously, we need two things. Best practice is record it on your phone because those things can shoot at least in um, high definition, full HD. You can also, some will do it in 4K, some will do it in 8K. And the beauty with those things is, is that, yeah, it's harder to edit, but you can take the footage out and do those digital zooms and stuff like that and do that digital correct. You can get away with one like we did with that, that commencement speech, but it was, it, they really had to trust that what they were shooting and they asked the presenter afterwards, how'd you feel? How was that? Was that a good take? and um, they would actually play it back almost immediately. And since it was a half hour speech, it was got to trust that was good speech. So again, I reckon I recommend having two feeds. It's not that big of a deal, you know, just to have a, a separate conversation. One is strictly teleprompting and one is strictly for the audience. You want to be able to choose whatever the best recording camera you have is. If the best recording camera is your is your laptop, great. You're gonna prompt um, to something else and you're gonna use that camera on that laptop as the recording device. If your phone rather has the best camera or your iPad has the best camera, then you're gonna use that to record with and you're gonna use your second device, whether it's your laptop or it's your iPad to display the scrolling text. What we do now, recognizing that the phones are the better cameras, what we end up doing is, is we end up sending our teleprompter signal full screen. We set the margins in so that it's right below where the camera is. Um, we don't want their eyes darting and stuff like that. You know, it's just like it's a dead giveaway that they're reading off of a teleprompter. We set it up so that the laptop is the teleprompting target. We're sending teleprompter. I'm feeding, I'm teleprompting from my home near San Francisco to my client's laptop in, you know, LA or Ohio or wherever. Then above that laptop, as close as we can, we're going to take the, um, we're going to take the phone and we're going to take that phone, squeeze it inside this, you know, handy little clamp here. And then we're gonna place this as close as we can above the laptop. So it's just the lens is right above it, you know, pretty much where the webcam would be. 
So, you know, there's the lens, you keep it as close as you can. And then you just make sure that the text is all dead centered and margins. And you don't want to have the full text, like I was saying, not have the full width. Um, the other best practice is to make sure that the person is like about three feet away, seems to be about the best distance. So right now I'm about three feet away from the lens on my camera. If we did like, you know, the traditional, hey, I'm looking at my laptop, it looks like garbage. You know, it's the sort of stuff that we, we joke about like Zoom meetings, but that's, we want to avoid professionally. So have the person step back. Um, you know, if you need to zoom in with the camera, if you can zoom in with the camera, that's always recommended, you know, instead of having a, a wide angle shot of this big bulbous nose and stuff like that. Um, what we like using for the camera is, is everybody has these little selfie sticks. And this one is cool because let's just say you don't have a laptop. You actually have a big old like iMac. Um, and these things are tall. So if you need to be able to have a tripod, um, this thing is sort of cool and that it, uh, folds out. And so you would just place this behind the, um, behind the big monitor that you've got. And then this thing just would, the lens would go right over the top of it. So same deal. So it's nice in that it goes, you know, it collapses down to right above the laptop, or if you have like an iMac or something like that, it goes all the way to the top. But yeah, this thing is, is this is what we see clients sending out. So they'll actually send out to their talent. Let's say they have like 15 people that they're going to interview, like let's interview 15 senators or, you know, or, or techs or something like that. They would send out, um, they would say, okay, you're going to use your phone, but we're going to send you out this little device that folds up. And we're also going to send you a professional mic or, you know, like a professional lavalier. And so that's part of the kit. And then they would have a, a tech day. If it's just an individual, you know, you don't have an entire crew to work with it. Then you, uh, having the tech day ahead of time is the best thing because you can say, okay, what is your backdrop like? Um, you know, can we, can we get rid of that ficus? Do we have to have those blinds? Can we, um, you know, can we get rid of that jacket that's on your, on your bed? You know, all these sort of things. So having that tech day, even three or four days, best practice before you do the actual show is great because you can get them familiar with the technology. You can get them familiar with the script. They can make edits. Editing scripts on the day of that moment is such a time waster. Um, so do that ahead of time, have your writing crew, having your speech crew work on that ahead of time. In the meantime, having this day, four days ahead of time allows you to see all these sort of things. You still have enough time to be able to, you know, ship stuff overnight. If you need to, you know, send an adapter or that microphone was bad, or you need a battery. Okay, great. We'll FedEx you a battery, but you know, whatever it takes, having that prep day with enough time to do the shipment is so key to these events now. Wow, that's uh, that's a lot of different options. Yeah, a lot of compact options, and it's really cool that you can do so much of that remotely. And it doesn't really take away your job uh, per se, uh, because there's a lot more. I would think you can probably speak to this as far as teleprompting goes than just scrolling. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And this is something that, you know, every teleprompter operator and, you know, to be honest, makeup and, and other departments have to fight for is the legitimacy of why do you need a best boy? Why do you need an extra three grips? This is stupid. You can do everything, can't you? But with prompting, it comes down to we're able to really feather that script perfectly to match that person's mood or um, you know, the spirit of that day, we're able to uh, suggest formatting edits. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, words aren't orphaned and you, they have to like, almost like zoom down to see the word. We can make sure that there's breaks, that it's easier to flow. We do all kinds of things like underlining words for emphasis. We'll do colors for, you know, let's say you have Bob and Mary speaking rapid fire. We'll make Bob's text in bright yellow and Mary's text in bright white. So as it's scrolling through, you know who's speaking. And it's just all these little tricks that we know as operators to make your shoot go that much smoother. 
Yeah, it's again, that's why we go through all this trouble of getting you real teleprompter, whether we're there, you know, on site being safe or whether we're there with you remotely. We want to get you the full experience. Neil, this is awesome. Thank you. Uh, that's wild. I mean, I'll talk about a little peek behind the curtain. Thank you so much for sharing all that stuff. Uh, that's, that's really cool. Good luck out there. Stay safe. And everyone else, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. we've come up with is a fun little thing that you can do with your basic switcher. And that is some chroma keying. And so what we do, this is a trick. Um, you can take your teleprompter text, you can make it white or yellow or some other big high contrasty color, but make the background be chroma key green. And then you simply send the uh, feed of a camera of a producer who's sitting there, you know, quiet, not saying anything, but quiet, just like nodding and like, uh-huh. Okay, great. Speed it up, speed it up. Okay, great. Enough set of stuff. Oh, I didn't know about that. And you just like, you know, train them on how to be a good audience. And they know what they're doing already. They're professionals, but train them to do it silently. It's kind of like, you know, you've seen people doing in Terratrons and iDirects and Voxbox. Same sort of idea is to have that audience listening in but not saying anything and, and doing what they have to do, almost like a mime to get the talent to, uh, to feel comfortable. You mentioned the Interatron. You could use that uh, instead of text, just feed the Zoom call into the, the process, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's all Aaron Morris did with his Interatron is way back in the day when he coined the phrase, or his wife did actually, he would just feed the signal from a second camera into just any old teleprompter. And then that image would come up. So instead of using this to, to portray text, they portrayed, you know, Errol Morris's head or whoever is doing the interviewing. So, you know, for example, Luke, you and I could have had this conversation with two teleprompters. You're able to see me. I'm able to see you. Uh, there's direct eye contact. It's it's really cool. We're not looking at our monitors down there or over there, and and yet we still have professional feeds. Yeah, there's all kinds of interviewing techniques that you can do with uh, teleprompting these days. It's cool, and it's a very immediate. Uh, so another another option.